if that was from the mouth to the liver, what are, what are we going to do next? We're going to take this lipid and we're going to then deliver it to the tissues. What tissues? Hmm, let me ask you something. I want you to picture adrenal cortex. Are you there? Close your eyes. Adrenal cortex. What are the layers? G, F, and R. What are they? Glomerulosa, fasciculata, reticularis. Interesting. Tell me about that reticularis. What are you producing reticularis? I do believe it's called cortisol. Good. If it's cortisol that you're producing, how in the world do you even begin the synthesis of your aldosterone? Glomerulosa. Cortisol. Reticularis. Sex steroids. Reticularis. Fasciculata, reticularis. And glomerulosa on the superficial side. How do you even begin the process of synthesizing those hormones? It begins with the process of cholesterol being cholesterol, being properly delivered to the tissue. Mm. Not triglycerides. Where does cholesterol like to live? What kind of package does cholesterol like to be in? It likes to be in LDL. Are you clear about the target? So what you have here in your tissue is going to be, you see where number one is? That number one represents LDL receptors. There's LDL receptors represents what target tissue that you are referring to. That target tissue, as an example that I just gave you, was your adrenal cortex. Now, before we get to that, take a look at the liver. So from the liver, we're going to then deliver triglycerides at first into circulation. We're going to, un going to go through a number of processes in which that triglycerides then becomes your cholesterol that is being properly delivered to the tissue. Let's begin. So from the liver is where we are. And just like we began in the previous discussion where we looked at your calomicron, right? Calomicron, where did that come from? The enterocyte, right? What did you require for formation of a calomicron? It was apple B48. Good. Here, the triglycerides being delivered by, do you see where it says VLDL? That VLDL is what is going to then transport your triglyceride. Okay? Now, you see where it says apple B100. How important is that? Ridiculously important. Apple B100 is a component that is required for proper VLDL formation. What does it contain? Triglycerides. Now, this is at first a precursor, a nascent VLDL. It's young. It's a baby. What was it that then matured my calomicron? Son, you have been knighted. Who knighted that particular baby vessel or package? It was called HDL. Here you have it here again. You see where it says HDL. HDL is going to then also implant or deliver C2 and E here as well to VLDL. You form a proper and mature VLDL. In the meantime, you'll see an exchange of what's known as CETP. All that is part of biochemistry that we do not have time to go through, but it's important that you understand the proper exchange between VLDL and HDL. So now that we're in, where am I now? You're in your circulation. Where did VLDL come from? It came from the liver. Keep this separate, please, from your calomicron that we discussed earlier. In the meantime, what you also find for me intestine, that's important for you in biochemistry as well, is some of your long chain uh, fatty acids, your LCAT. So all of this is then going to allow you to properly form your HDL. And what do you know about HDL? HDL is a scavenger. Scavenger of what? It's a scavenger of cholesterol. What do we call HDL? We call HDL good cholesterol. What is the magic number that you want to know for HDL? It's called 50. Hmm? 50. Remember that. Why? Because if your patient has an HDL less than 50, not a good thing. So you want HDL to be on the higher side because it'll scavenge the cholesterol specifically from your blood vessels and such. Let's continue. So now you have VLDL. What does it contain? Triglycerides. So let me ask you this question. What did the tissue require for proper synthesis of your cell membrane? If a tissue required, let's say, uh, production of your cortisol, or if it's down in your gonads, you needed to produce what? Testosterone, estrogen. Hmm? It wasn't triglycerides that you were delivering. It's the fact that you were delivering your cholesterol. So what are you going to do now? Now, quickly, you're going to then go through intermediates. So there, now you have lipoprotein lipase, CPL. You're taking out the triglyceride and you're forming IDL. What does IDL mean to you? Uh, intermediate density lipoprotein. In this IDL, eventually is going to form your LDL. Right now, for pathology purposes, we're going to keep things simple. So at this point, for all effective discussion, we have taken triglycerides from the liver and delivered to the tissue in the form of LDL. Now, that LDL receptor, what if it was deficient? Wow, this is not good. In the previous discussion, we looked at where the 
E receptor was deficient. What's that called? E receptor. I showed you how many lines? Three horizontal lines. That was what kind of uh, hyperlipoproteinemia? One, two, three. You need three horizontal lines to form a capital E. In this case, if you have an LDL receptor deficiency, you all must know that this is a type 2 hyperlipoproteinemia. If this is a type 2 hyperlipoproteinemia, another name for this is called, well, before you even memorize this, which you shouldn't be doing to begin with, LDL is being accumulated in your circulation. What does LDL contain? It contains cholesterol. And so therefore, if cholesterol is being elevated, what do you call this when you have LDL receptor deficiency? There you have it. Number one, familial hypercholesterolemia type 2. To repeat, E had three, type 3. Do you remember the other name for that? It was called familial dysbeta lipoproteinemia. I don't care how you do this, but you must memorize that type E or type 3, which is the E receptor deficiency. It's called familial dysbeta lipoproteinemia. Here we have familial hypercholesterolemia. What was uh, type 1? Type 1 in the previous discussion was the fact that you were missing capillary lipoprotein lipase. What did you require to stimulate the capillary lipoprotein lipase? C2. So if C2 and lipoprotein lipase aren't present, what are you accumulating in your patient? Good. Tons of calomicron. What does calomicron contain? Tons of triglycerides. So what might you call type 1? Hypertriglyceridemia. Is that clear? Do you see as to how it's important? It's important that you pay attention normal so that as you plug in the pathology, all of this is coming to life. Now, let's take a look at number two. You see number two. Number two, once again, bottom line is this. There's accumulation of type four. Accumulation of VLDL. VLDL has one, two, three, four letters in it. Thus, accumulation of VLDL, which also contains triglyceride, would be a type 4 hyperlipoproteinemia. And you, this may either be primary or secondary hypertriglyceridemia. Is that clear? And how important is this? Very. The reason I say that is the following. Of all of these hyperlipoproteinemia, which one seems to be a little bit more common? Well, once again, in the United States, what's an epidemic? Obesity is an epidemic. Obesity, what does that mean to you? Large amounts of lipid. What kind of lipid? Lots of triglycerides, and it's mostly VLDL that is accumulating. Later on in endocrinology, when we talked about diabetes, mellitus, and there isn't enough insulin, we'll understand that those patients who are obese and you have insulin resistance, that that patient is going to have accumulation of increased VLDL. Take a look at this. What type of hyperlipoproteinemia is this? Type 4. Okay, not to worry. All of this we're going to repeat over and over again. At this point, we're just giving you two schematics of which how your patient and your, our bodies really handles and manages a lipid that's coming through our entire um, body, either from the mouth or from the liver to the tissue. You just completed your first video of the world's best medical exam preparation. Lecturio brings the knowledge of worldwide leading medical experts and teaching award winners to your PC, tablet, or smartphone. Prepare yourself and check your progress with thousands of quiz questions customized to USMLE standards. And the very best, you can get in touch with our medical experts personally. Visit Lecturio.com now and continue with the most inspiring medical education around the globe, anytime, anywhere.